I think the John Alex situation really highlights how politically charged and polarizing the current state of affairs is, not just in MMA, but society with politics in terms of left-leaning and right-leaning right -leaning, sorry, demographics. Um, and if you look at the abuse that he was referring to for the Sean Strickland and Drickus Stuplessis fight that he got online afterwards, he even went to the extent of saying that he was considering quitting the sport. Um, and obviously he then issued a statement afterwards saying that um, he's not going to be doing that and he's going to be sticking around. But I think that if you look at the content creators within the MMA space as well, um, like MMA Guru, for example, who leans one direction, that's quite the opposite to other guys who are campaigning for um, what they feel is social justice within the sphere. Um, in terms of putting my own uh, take on that and making my own stance clear, my political leanings are central. Um, I'm not left or right wing. I think there are, there's good and bad in both. Both have their merits and limitations. I'm uh, not far left or far right by any stretch of the imagination. I don't subscribe to the cancel culture doctrine. Um, I don't subscribe to the fascism, nationalism doctrine either. I think um, both of those are something that generally in society it's a good thing to steer clear of but as it pertains to MMA specifically um, I think it's worth highlighting that MMA does tend to attract a right-wing audience and it's important to distinguish between right-wing and far-right often people conflate the two into this all-encompassing entity where everything that veers east of uh, central gets put to the right-wing category and what I think has become increasingly apparent, and I've noticed this across the board, is, is that MMA as a fan base and the demographic it attracts now in 2023 is more far right than I personally have noticed before. Um, that's something that's been echoed by a few of the friends I've spoken to in the industry and in private as well. Um, and I think if you go through forums and comment sections, you'll see that too. That's echoed across the spectrum in that MMA right now attracts arguably its most far right wing fan base ever. And um, I think that what we're seeing is, is that things like even the chance at UFC fight nights like the F Joe Biden or pro Donald Trump thing, I appreciate that's politically charged and whichever side you lean towards on that front, you know, I'm not gonna um, tell you what you should and shouldn't do, so it's not meant in that angle, but I think it's quite telling that at most of the UFC fight nights as well, the sorts of chants you'll hear are very, very right-wing. Um, Joe Biden or the Democrats are used as like a derogatory term, and it's very pro-right, right-wing, very pro-Donald Trump, um, and again, um, in terms of my own perception of that, I don't think Biden or Trump are fit to be president personally. So, you know, I'm not going to lean into any direction in terms of um, skewing objectivity in that regard. But it has become increasingly clear that MMA is becoming more and more right wing. It's always going to be right wing inherently because that's the demographic it attracts. You won't see too many um, guys on the left wing um, that are into combat sports, although there are people who are very, very left who are into combat sports, but by and large, it does tend to be the right. And that's not exclusive to MMA or UFC. In boxing as well, um, that's the demographic. Now, in terms of media members and content creators alike, I noticed that there's a real polarity um, in terms of where people sit, on the right, on the left, and it's sort of split into two halves, put it down the middle, into two halves where on the left, you've got the guys who are campaigning for fighter pay and campaigning for health insurance and what they see as social injustice or they feel that the UFC have excessive power and they use exploitative practices, that's their view, um, and they campaign for that very hard. And on the other side, you've got the 
pro Dana White um, supporters who feel that everyone needs to be indebted to him and the whole corporation for what they've done for the growth of MMA. Because obviously with the UFC's growth, everyone else has benefited from that. The sport's become bigger and that's what they argue. Um, and there's no one really in between. <laughs> it's really, really... Um, um, it's really hard to find an equilibrium in that sense. Um, really difficult, actually, because everyone is so polarizing either one direction or the other and a lot of the time quite provocative too if you look at the language that people use and the way they speak online or they put out tweets um the mma guru against john anik one being a prime example of that um and then i saw a dispute online between um different different factors and different factions and content creators within the MMA space as well. Um, and they make their feelings very clear politically too. They're either very left-leaning or very right-leaning. And what you tend to see is, is that there's very little compromise in either direction. Now, I appreciate I'm not an American. I don't live in America. And, you know, I don't see the day-to-day um, social fabric of that society to know enough or purport to know enough um, in a YouTube video that I can see why people say the things they do and it makes sense 100% of the time I don't. But I think it is partly wide, it's partly a wider reflection of the US society in general and how charged everything is politically and that spills over into MMA now as well. I think we see that in the content that's produced, um, the sorts of discussion points that are put out. And that's why I wanted to make this video because coming in from a central angle, I do think there is merit to what both sides are saying. I think that it's always important to ensure some degree of competitiveness in the industry. I think that's fair, but equally, I don't subscribe to the do as I say or your cancelled mantra. I don't think that's fair. And then on the other side, I do agree in the sense of when you say that the UFC's growth is partly, well, it is to a strong degree responsible for why MMA is where it is. I agree with that, but I don't agree with the, they are exempt from scrutiny. I think the UFC are subject to scrutiny as is any corporation or any fighter or any promoter or any faction within combat sport. No one is exempt from criticism. And it's quite difficult um, being in the middle because very few fans and content creators alike can relate in that sense. It's um, across the pond, especially, it's very difficult to find people in the middle that are willing to compromise and say, okay, you can take X and Y from here and Z from here and put them together and say, okay, we've got a reasonable enough argument. Um, but with the John Anik comments, I mean, I think everyone is human to a degree. And if he felt that, look, I'm human, I'm getting nonstop abuse for how I judge the fight, then I understand where he's coming from. But at the same time, I don't necessarily feel that all of the criticism he was getting was um, objective in that sense. And I felt that there was a cult element to that in that being very, very far right, very, very pro Sean Strickland, and leaning in that direction. Um, I don't agree with everything John Anik says. In the same way, I don't agree with everything everyone says. There's good and bad in what everyone does and says, but it's become very polarizing to the point where I noticed with the Sean Strickland uh, defeat, I scored it 3-2 to Drickus, but if you had it 3-2 to Strickland, then I could make a case for that very easily because you could also say, Excuse me. You could also say, um, if you do nothing with takedowns or top control and it doesn't lead to damage or active submission threats, then that doesn't constitute um, the round going your way or the points coming your way, so to speak. So if someone had that fight 3-2 to Strickland, I wouldn't argue with that at all. Um, it's 50-50, very open to interpretation. Most people gave it to Strickland, and like I said, I don't disagree with that. 
Um, if I rewatch the fight, I probably have a different view. And if I watched it a few times, I'd probably uh, flip between DDP and Sean Strickland a few times over. So that remains to be seen. But I've noticed that when fighters are attacked these days, then the associated political connotations they have also get attacked along the way. And what I mean by that is, is that if Sean Strickland is judged to have lost a fight, as was the case with John Anik, then um, I think that people take that very personally and they then sort of feel right. Because he, showed, he spoke about Sean Strickland losing in that way, that's an attack on our side of the political fabric or that side of the political leaning. Um, but at the same time, this is the fight business and everyone is entitled to an opinion. Um, and you know, you do have to be thick skinned to be a combat sports content creator or in the boxing and MMA space generally. If you're not, you're gonna be in trouble. Um, naturally, we're all human. There are things that you'll see online sometimes that you're not gonna enjoy. And at the same time, there are things online that are said that you are gonna like. So it's part and part of the parcel and that's just an inherent part of life. Um, but I do feel that going forward, it's gonna be really interesting to see what sort of landscape lies within MMA media generally, because very much, well, not so much the boxing world as much, but very much like society in America, I think, everything is becoming so politically charged that I'm not sure if it's gonna be resolved anytime soon, this sort of media divide to the left and the right wing um, and I think it's going to become more polarizing as time goes on, particularly given that the next election is due. Um, and yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how that unfolds as well. Um, but irrespective of whether you're Democrat, Republican, Biden, Trump, whoever you support or lean towards, um, it's going to be interesting to see how that inadvertently through the societal tension there is, then spills over or perhaps even accelerates the direction of um, polarity and um, essentially fragmentation of the MMA fan base in general. And not just the fan base, the media too, because they make their feelings very clear in, way, in the way they politically lean or who they support as a result, largely of who they politically lean towards as well. Um, and I do think that bias is going to become an increasingly um, prevalent thing, which is unfortunate, but it's, uh, it's the combat sports space and um, it's an inevitable part of what we've come to accept as modern, modern day MMA media. Um, but I think that going forward, um, it's going to be interesting to see that. But in terms of myself, I think that Looking at it from a central lens, it is quite interesting in particular to see how things are dividing, going left and right, and leaning more so now than ever before. And look, I'm 27, I appreciate my life experience isn't anywhere near comparable to the likes of uh, Max Kellerman or Luke Thomas, who are double my age, for example. Um, but from what I have seen, albeit 27 years, um, I do feel that over the past decade in particular, this is the worst I've seen it in terms of polarity. A lot of bias in both directions, left wing and right wing, pro UFC, anti UFC. Um, and I don't see that stopping or finishing anytime soon, to be frank with you. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions that you'd like me to answer for you in future videos or the extended breakdowns, just tweet them over to me. That's at ElusiveRaf on Twitter. If you guys want to see my daily fight analysis uploads, I upload those every day to Instagram and that's at Elusive 2.0 on Instagram.